Welcome back to the Comics Aficionados live here on Thinking Critical YouTube. Uh, sorry, we're about five minutes late. We were waiting for Aaron Sparrow, but he says he'll be right here. And we're also waiting on Mr. T-Bear. Hopefully he'll be here in the not-too-distant future as well. But we do have a fantastic panel to talk about cobble books and all that good stuff. Hopefully everyone's having a fantastic weekend. And a huge welcome back to Mr. Mike Barron. Now you've got Nexus Scourge live on Indiegogo, Kickstarter, and Fun My Comic right now. That's right. Very stoked about this. If you guys want an exciting superhero comic, this is the one. We've won every major award. Very nice. There's also links in the video description if you want to go check out the, the campaigns as well as to Mike's uh, website, which I think will take you to link to all those as well. And the, they're fully funded on three different sites same, simultaneously. Yeah. However, it's a long way to the top. <laughs> so you got another four weeks? Yeah. Uh, and we're trying to unlock those stretch goals because uh, if we do, we're going to introduce all sorts of in incredible art. Anybody who's seen Kelsey Shannon's art is, has had has been knocked off their feet. Well, Kelsey's nice. a really nice artist. I like oh, yeah. him. He's fantastic. And congratulations on that. Thank you. We've also got a returning Jim. You did not almost die this week. No. No, I I have stretch goals too. I, I want to be able to stretch and like reach places on my body. It's not working <laughs> anymore. I'm getting too old. Jim, you're only in your what early fifties? I'm only in my yes, yes. So yeah, I'm not, not that bad. I'm yes. a spring chicken, I guess. I Hang feel up you never... down like a bat. <laughs> That's what I need to do. I, I do need to do that. But yeah, I uh, you know I'm I'm just always I feel like I'm three hundred. So it's fine. Well, do you remember Jim when you were like a little kid and you saw your grandparents and like? Oh yeah, yeah. Like my grandma and grandpa, as early as I can remember them, they had no teeth. Like they had these weird, like really thick, <laughs> like uh, toenails and stuff. And I'm thinking about, it, I was like, they were only like 45. Yeah, <laughs> they were younger than exactly. me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess the depression really did a number on people. You know I, I mean? think that's what it does to me too. Uh, you, oh, you <laughs> meant the, you meant the economic. Yeah, right? they, I, people are aging. I didn't slower. realize. Yes, I, I do think so. I mean, you know, Wilfred Brimley, uh, God rest his soul, like you know, that guy. He was like 20 and looked like he was 800. So, you know, <laughs> it, it works out. Well, the funniest one that I remember was whenever they would show Wilford Brimley when he made Cocoon was the same age that Tom Cruise was when yeah. he made like Mission Impossible like six. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Wilford Brimley was great, though. I miss him. Yeah. I just found out that Wilford Brimley died. Thanks, Jim. I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert, Aaron. <laughs> no, no. I don't want to spoil things. But he passed yeah. away in 2020. It's he been four years. Away. How, did, how yeah. has no one told me this? It's all that oatmeal and shit he ate. And you're diabetes. Dark, huh? <laughs> it was the diabetes. Yeah. Man. So, Sparrow, how you doing, buddy? Oh, speaking of people who are dying. Uh... <laughs> I thought you were doing better. I was, I was, I was doing better uh, yesterday, and then last night I started to feel terrible again. So uh, I don't know. It, like the nighttime seems to seems to bring on the worst aspects of it. But during the day, I seem to be pretty good. Well, I'm glad that we could get you up nice and early, and you know, get you out of that beauty sleep. I don't want you. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, I am on the mend. But uh, but yeah, just I man, I, I haven't been able to shake this flu. It's been probably the worst uh, worst flu I've ever had. Are you so taking something... zinc, Eric? Aaron, are you taking zinc? I am, yeah, yeah. I take zinc every day. Good. That's why. Uh, that's that's why COVID. Too. I think that's why COVID never really, uh, never really hit me, is because uh, my magnesium and zinc game is strong. I'm sorry. You mean the other flu? The <laughs> other flu. Yeah. <laughs> flu too. <laughs> I do think you have a sexier voice, though, Aaron. It's very, oh, very yeah. sexy. Yes. Yeah. All right. So See, there's something, something I, for me. I wanted to talk to you about here, Aaron. And there's actually already a, a super chat about. It, so we'll hit it now. Callum says. Transformers 1 looks like Paramount's joke on me. They could have just adapted the story about the library clerk and gladiator, but no. But then you wouldn't get those great jokes, Callum, like uh, Bumblebee wanting to be called Badassatron. Were you, as, I know you're a huge Transformers fan. We talk about Transformers all the time. We're enjoying the comic book. You know, Transformers 1, I don't know that I wanted an origin story for Optimus Prime, but if I did, it wasn't this one. No, it definitely wasn't this one. This one seems like it's aimed at very little kids, which is fine. But um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't know if you know. It, it might be successful. It, it might not. It doesn't look good. It looks like just the the worst kind of like writing tropes of the current day. 
uh, with really forced humor and, uh, you know, kind of this. I'm sure at some point in the movie, uh, Megatron uses the line, we're not so different, you and I. I'm sure that, uh, you know, one of the characters will say, why are we doing this again? I think that, you know, he's, he's right behind me, isn't he? I think we're going to get all those same stupid jokes that we get in everything. Um, that's just how the trailer looks to me. So, yeah, I, this is a, I think this is a huge miss. But, um, you know, if kids like it, then I guess they hit their target audience. My kids are going to love it. I can yeah. already tell. And I'm going to hate myself for having to watch it five times in a row. Are they going to say, I, I think don't the, think we're in Kansas anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll get that, I'm sure, uh, even though they're on Cybertron. It's like, what's Kansas? Uh, and we'll probably <laughs> get that joke right after. It's like, what's Kansas? Um, you get it, audience? Get it? Um, yeah, that felt so, flat. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, I think it's, it's it, it looks really bad. Um, I'm really sorry that they continue to dumb down entertainment for children. Um, and uh, I really I, I think wanted the, the origin story. movie, it, like the first 10 minutes of Bumblebee on Cybertron. But I guess I think you can tell a fascinating for. story. Yeah, I think you can tell a fascinating story about you know Orion Pax and uh, and Megatron before they you know before they became Optimus Prime and the leader of the Decepticons. I think there is a story there. Uh, there is a great story about a friendship torn apart. If you want to do that, but uh, it just looks like they're just doing this in the dumbest way possible. Yeah. Looks like it's written by Chat GPT, which apparently I've had a lot to say about this week. <laughs> You're mad at Chat GPT. Why are you mad at Chat GPT? I'm not mad at Chat GPT. I'm mad at uh, I'm mad at people that use it and pass themselves off as a writer. I have no oh. idea what that is. <laughs> it's, it's a program where you basically put in uh, you can put in a bunch of prompts, Mike. You can say like, "Give me a story about you know two wizards that go on a you know an adventure," and then ChatGPT will like scour the web and spit out a you know a, a plot line for you, and it can even uh, it can even do dialogue for you, which is uh, really apparent dialogue. So they, if, they've uh, never watched Demon like. Seed. Or in the, <laughs> uh, Colossus, the Forbin Project, or War Games, or Transformers, yeah. or I'm yeah. sorry, or, Terminator, yeah, or had an ounce of uh, or Police of Academy in their lives, Police Academy. Yeah. So I think they did watch Police Academy and then wrote Transformers <laughs> One. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, not the good jokes. <laughs> Police Academy Four is what. Well, they yeah. yeah, when whenever Gutenberg leads Police Academy, it goes downhill. From <laughs> that's there. when you know it's yeah. trouble. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh. Oh man, we lost the goot. What are we doing? Why are we making exactly? More? But I, I, um, I was pretty excited when I got the thing and somebody sent it to me. Then when I watched it, my like, I think my jaw was on the floor. I was like, "Oh my god, they made Transformers like not cool." I didn't think it was possible. Well, I guess it was possible. IDW did it, but yeah. but nobody there read that. So <laughs> you know, it wasn't wasn't uh, the damage wasn't done. Uh, not enough. In honor of four twenty, uh, we're offering a special on Florida Man. 20% off. <laughs> Very nice. Strike while the bong is hot. <laughs> you, know, you know, I live in Colorado where marijuana is legal and there's a shop right up the street. Uh, and uh, usually it's it's snowing here, so they're not going to have, but usually they have a big party with a band. I've heard some great bands here. Very nice. Well, if you wanted to do something to really honor Marvel comics, you could print your comic book on zigzags. <laughs> stable together and hand it to people be like what do you mean it ripped it's supposed to hold all the color <laughs> no we use we use sheet steel for our pages <laughs> yes because you actually care about whether the cover book can be read oh my goodness uh last up we do have domesticated doc you uh you abandoned me last weekend but you are back i did i did i abandoned you last weekend because i had to go to a cheerleading world championship thing i don't know i had national championships national huh? championships I, I don't i don't even remember what the shit i'm going to half the time these days um yeah but no i'm back uh i i, I had Is a, there a picture of you holding the trophy like no. in front of all the girls no like but um <laughs> but there, there there was a conversation about which uh which uh, which cheerleading uniform i would look best in the answer <laughs> was uh none none <laughs> um of course. And uh yeah, so no, I am I, I am not going to be uh you know doing much more of that anytime soon. So what else did you do? You go to like um did you go to Home Depot? What does domesticated um, doc do on the weekends now that you don't go to comic shops? Um well actually I went to a comic shop last night. I went and I uh did a little bit of long box diving and basically bought a bunch of old books. Um I was filling in some of my run on ASM that I was missing. And um, now that I have completed my X-Men 1 through 600 run, 
Um, it's I, not big enough yet. It's not big enough yet. I still had like some of the reprints and variants to do. Uh, probably about like 20 or 30 of them. <clears throat> but I decided that I was going to break down and start differentiating between newsstand and direct. So I bought a bunch, when I had newsstands, I bought the directs. And when I bought the directs or when I had the directs, I bought some of the newsstands last night. So I bought another, like, I don't know, 35, actually like 65 comics last night. So congratulations. Yeah. I guess you got to pamper yourself when you win that national title. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a winner. Absolutely. Very nice stuff. I do want to say thank you very much uh, to everyone supporting Thank You Critical on Patreon. Uh, we have one new backer this week. Thank you very much to Travis Touchdown, who fights as the Gridiron and is the protector of Kane, Ohio, the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in North America. Mm -hmm. A fantastic stuff. Thank you very much to Travis, as well as everyone else for supporting us on the Patreon. Really appreciate that good, good stuff. As we uh, we talk about some cow book stuff here, we do have one more super chat. Calb says, "Did that massive f word Tom King write that comic to keep his job?" Bundle of sticks. I don't know. Um, I'm assuming he's talking about uh, Wonder Woman number eight that I reviewed on the channel yesterday. I'm gonna go with probably. It's kind of his job, so I, I think yes. I think he has <laughs> that, to turn in the that comic. Book, you know, is it's not his job. His <laughs> job is to entertain. Yes, well, it, somebody has well, to tell fail. him. Failed at that. <laughs> um, Jim, you read Wonder this. Woman eight, right? I have. Yeah, I was not entertained. <laughs> I'll tell you that. No, Are it was, you it not was bad. No. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. Well, I have to say, I haven't read it. I just saw what everybody said about it, and and five or six sample pages that they showed, but that was that was enough for me. No. Sometimes you get the point. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Aaron. No, no, I was just going to say that uh, I, I think that more than any comic, perhaps, that Tom King has ever written, uh, this one illustrated how Tom King is, like, a very dumb person that, uh, that like, but, like the, the smart, you know, that uh, what a very dumb person views as smart. Like that's that's his writing style. Is if you're very dumb, you will read his stuff and go like, "Oh, he really has something to say." It's really but if you deep. spend more than yeah, if you spend more uh, than yeah, that's like, the problem. Three seconds the, analyzing it. The uh, dumb you, you person's realize. idea of what a smart person sounds like. Thank you, Doc. See, See I'm glad Gary, you're here to I'm glad you're here to encapsulate what my fevered brain is trying to say. <laughs> there's a, there's a comment in the comment section that I have to repeat. It's from Gary Redman. He says the biggest sin that uh, Wonder Woman number eight commits is that it was boning. I don't remember the sex scene. <laughs> it, was it was very boning. boring. Yeah, yeah. It was very I mean, boring. I felt I felt boned after reading it. <laughs> yeah. My wallet felt boned. Oh, wait, I would have had to buy it. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Yeah. My uh, philosophy of comics is that every part has to be entertaining. Every panel has to be entertaining and advance the story. I feel like that's not a big ask. Like, mm. that, that should be the bare minimum that... A, a comic a comic should do mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's the thing it was boring and it didn't even progress the story much it, it didn't do much in it much it didn't progress the story well you get you know she's choking out the sovereign at the end and so you know. was there <laughs> ever a good. point in the comic book where you thought if she ever gets their hands on the sovereign she won't be able to choke him out no, but I was thinking if I could get my hands on somebody else. I, you know, <laughs> he, he looks like the vulture, first off. I mean, seriously, if she gets his, her hands, she's done. Has there yeah. ever been a point in the entire eight issues where it felt like there were any side, sort of stakes whatsoever? <laughs> it, it just, the Sovereign is not, he's not established as an interesting villain. He's not established as a threat. He's no. just sort of there. He's already and... walked through the entire like mm -hmm. army and defeated Sarge Steel single-handedly. He's not a threat, no. I believe at one yeah. point Sarge Steel was eating a steak in one of the issues, I, I think. But that was about it, yeah. There we go. Lane says, so Sparrow Man at Intel Officer West, what you going to do when the Headland and Star Wars Acolyte Mania runs wild on you, brother? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we're not he's ready for the madness. He's mocking you. He's trying to torture you, Aird. We're not ready for the madness. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking forward to Star Wars the Acolyte, but the things we I'm, do for the peoples, Aaron. 
I know, I know. I'm looking forward to the death of Star Wars, and this might just be the, the last two bullets in the head of this franchise. Well, if you just think there are only three Star Wars movies, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. That's true. And there's so much good stuff in the EU. Obviously, Mike, you did a lot of, uh, of work in the EU stuff. And the fact that they couldn't, they didn't go there to find one good idea is still mind boggling. Well, that's Timothy Zahn's work that I adapted, and he's the best Star Wars novelist. And of course, they should just adapt his books, but they are using uh, uh, his Grand Admiral Thrawn in the movies mm -hmm. now, I understand. And that's that's a step in the right direction. But is uh, it not like writing Sophie, it, no. You might feel different. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. When we see it. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're using well, a character, but is it going right, to resemble right. that character in any way? This is their idea of how Thrawn is smart, Mike. Uh, you give it to a guy like Dave Filoni, who's not a smart guy, and he starts writing this highly intelligent character. The way that he does it is, I'm going to have him do really stupid things, and then when those things fail, he'll say, well, this was all part of my plan. My plan yeah, all and, along. And we'll just keep doing that. We'll keep doing that. Like, he has some secret, you know, like, there's a reason I keep bungling things and doing stupid things, and it's all part of my grand scheme. But there's, there's no grand scheme. <laughs> it's just... Which he will reveal in due time. Mm -hmm. No, no, He'd he just it. got straight up beaten by Ahsoka and <laughs> stranded on the other side of the galaxy, right? Oh well, yeah. Wait, no, he he made it out, didn't he? He made he with, made it out um, in, in Ed, Ahsoka, yeah. Edgar or Bridger, Ezra, yeah, was, yeah, Ezra, yeah. That was rough. Uh, Calb says yes, Aaron. All incestuous for his mommy he hates his family, <laughs> and as far as that stupid villain, it looks like uh, he took away a page from Mark Wade. Yeah, that villain uh, is basically just kind of like King Baby, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing also, you have to, Tom King also hates uh, guys a lot because his, I guess his dad left him and he, he bitches and moans about that a lot too. Maybe he should be asking himself why his dad left. <laughs> wow. he, Come on. Hey, holy moly. Hey, no, no, no. I'm going to be perfectly clear. <laughs> Tom King, you were the reason your dad left. Uh, oh, my no. God. <laughs> I'm saying Aaron has <laughs> drank too much NyQuil this morning. I think. <laughs> awful human filter, being. Filter, filter is off this week. Uh, yes. My dad left my mom. It wasn't because uh, I was a bad kid. No. My mom was but, crazy. But mm -hmm. Tom... But Tom is the reason why his dad was. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy it. Allegedly. Not very, for, yeah, I'm not even giving it a perhaps. <laughs> nah. Federico de la Casa. Aaron is right. Too many writers nowadays want to prove they're smart failing instead of the uh, to entertain if they criticize this, the same reader. It's a shame that the readers are narcissists. Uh, I've criticized they shame the readers as narcissists, yeah. I think. Well. Or I, I think it's they shame or they the shame readers. the reader, they're and narcissists. The writers are narcissists. Yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. yeah. It's kind of true. The punctuation cap. Like sometimes people people gotta like crunch it yes. all together and, and a, a lot of this cipher. A lot of these writers, they actually do seem to be like you know, a contest to see who can look as pretentious and pompous as the next. And yeah, they get mad when people call them out. That's what I'm loving about writing Neil before Doomface is I just get to pour all the uh, all the pomposity into Doomface and his dialogue and uh, <laughs> and then try to but I try to make it. That's your self insert. You can't let that out there, Aaron. Someone did tell me they said Doomface talks a lot like when they read the, the they said Doomface talks a lot like you, just like uh, it's just you but fancier. <laughs> he's, a said, super, he's a self insert. It's not a self insert. Uh, yes. No, it just, oh, it you just, just so happens that <laughs> no, it's not. He's just happens to be as smart as me. His yeah. motivations are not are not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nerd says, I saw a panel in Wonder Woman. Uh, she had her hands tied by ropes. It's like no one remembers wristbands are also her weakness. If a man puts them together, she can't unbind them. 2024 women have no weakness. That's It's literally Wonder Woman. I mean, that was every... Go look at like every 1940s through 1970s. or Well, whenever Wonder Woman became, became all mod whatever year that was um, when she lost her powers and started dressing. Mm, yeah. Oh, like, she became like a spy and stuff. Like yeah. Spy. Yeah. 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 Um, up until then, like 80% of the most valuable wonder woman comics are bondage covers because she'd be tied up in her wrists. When her wrists touch, she loses her strength. It was the whole thing because the, he What's was his, into it. Yeah, yeah. he was. He Mar was yeah, a Marston, kingster. Marston, Marston liked yeah. bondage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He had a really, really good Popeye cover where he's like trying to eat the spinach, but you're, but you won't let him have it. 
Uh-huh. Like, bondage, like right? Aquaman going for the water. Yeah. Superman's <laughs> keeping it from him. <laughs> I, but, miss jerk, I, don't know. I miss jerk Superman covers. Yeah, Superman those were the always, best. That's <laughs> doing the best. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't squeal, I'm going to throw you into the propeller blade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yelling at Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> Superman torches a nerd. <laughs> uh, yeah. It used to happen. All right, let me put that there. And then we got Uden Ur87. Morning, gents, and welcome back, Doc. Got my hands on Nakayama's X-Men 92 variant foil cover from 616. Never going to read it, but it's a beaut. You it's know what? probably already slabbed. <clears throat> Actually, I have one of those right in front of me. Oh, let's the, see it. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's right there. Oh, it's on right the secret feed. here. Uh oh, wow. we got to put you on solo. Shiny. Yeah, yeah. It's the the you David know, that, Nakayama. That's funny because that hemisphere at the top kind of mirrors your head when you pull it back. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> there, there you is. got a big <laughs> sun head. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yep. So yeah, no, it's that's a cool, so nice. it's a cool looking, it's it is a really cool looking foil. Um, but I got it uh from a friend. They had a couple extra copies, and I was like, you know what, I'll take one of those because I'm a sucker for foil variants. You're such a kid of the '80s and '90s. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. So you I know don't they're going to put baseball diet. cards in there, and you're not going to be able to help yourself, dude. One of the issues of ASM that I got was the yesterday was like in the three nineties because my copy was fucking destroyed, um, right around the time of the the, the Clone Saga, and it had the three cards that were uncut inserted in the spine so whatever you gotta you can't bend the fucking thing like at all <laughs> like there's just a flat hard part in the middle of the spine so you speaking of superheroes i got a book <coughs> that's uh campaigning right now wes i wonder if you would show that trailer oh, it'll only take I a do minute have it. absolutely let's uh where is it there it is and now i need to go back to it oh no that's the wrong <laughs> one well, that, normally it. I have the file well, that's, downloaded. That's it. No audio. You want to reboot till you get the audio? There's no audio? No. It's yeah. not playing. I mean, no. this, is a, this is a visual experience right now. It is. And it looks really, really, really dope. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but the audio is tremendous too. I mean, cause, this uh, looks like comics used to. Yes, when they were good. <laughs> you got that uh, the scroll on the bottom, so it might be uh, keyed for no sound, but but scroll. We're having technical difficulties. Uh, well, I could, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Very nice. Thanks, so now Wes. I remember why I always get the file because if I if I share the screen, you don't get audio. I just remember. Uh, but I think people got the got the essence of it, Mike. Thank you. Uh, very very good stuff. I'm sorry about the audio, but uh, everyone got to get get to see it. There's a link. To you, all the different places that you can get uh, Mike Barron's comic book, because if you if you're an any go go only person or a Kickstarter only person or a fun my comic person, uh, though, there's links on all of them because he's got the the campaign line on all uh, live on all those uh, different platforms. Uh, and I will say this is one superhero you will believe in, and there are no boring parts. Mm. And Mike Barron, if I get a copyright strike for showing your trailer on my channel, <laughs> I'm talking to that you. That'll never happen, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen. Mike's going to just be like, nah, fuck that guy. That would be great. All right. So I guess we should get into this DC Comics Absolute Universe. It's going to be a shared continuity of sorts, much like the Marvel Ultimate Universe, but it will be spinning out of absolute power. And they're going to try and do, and I think this is impossible, Jim. They're going to try and do New 52 right 
while also adhering to core concepts of, I guess, DC Rebirth. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is very weird. It, it's odd. And, and right away, people were already saying, like, if you can do this, well, why can't you just make the regular books good? Uh, but <laughs> but all around, the deal is, I mean, I hear everybody bitching and moaning about the books, and this might be good. So, you know, I'll, I'll go for it. But it is an odd concept. It, it's very odd how they're trying to do it. And, and just bringing up that idea of it being New 52, I see it turning a lot of people off. So yeah. I like the new 52. I was actually a fan. That's when you of started reading DC Comics. Yeah, it was one. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I liked it. But there, you know, like everything else, there's good books, there's bad books. I just hope this doesn't get so blown up that they end up having, you know, shitty writers on it. That, that would be the death of it. But we'll see. It's going to be Scott Snyder, yeah. Jason Aaron, and Al mm -hmm. Ewing. Does that, does that uh, tickle your fancy? <laughs> Two out of three. It's, I'm it's sorry. Not bad, I as Nate Love says, right? I Maybe. thought Wes. I thought Wes said Scott Steiner for a second. I'm like, oh, I would, I get to, I would read. <laughs> I would read the shit out of Scott yeah. Steiner writing a comic book. <laughs> if he reads, if he reads anything like one of his promos, oh, it's gonna be great. Yes, I just think of <laughs> Steiner math. <laughs> yeah. Forty two percent of me says eighty two percent of you has got zero percent of chance and fourteen percent of dynasty. The numbers don't <laughs> lie. <laughs> the best the best thing he ever said was when he supposedly had put diamond ballast page in the hospital and he came out unscripted and said so while you're on your back in the hospital screaming in pain your wife's on her back screaming my name <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm God. sorry we just, I, I, I'm sorry I took this off on a tangent <laughs> <laughs> it, but it would be better than, than did i tell you Wes, that i'd like the new 52 <laughs> well that's the good thing for you jim is you came in at such a shitty period that your yep. expectations for cobble books are lower than most people they they are i guess uh but no you know the idea of this again i see a lot of people bitching and moaning about the current dc lineup so it could be better that that's all i go with i just don't think it's going to be the you know big thing that they might think it is uh it just seems a little odd the numbers don't lie jim they you don't 52 books coming Listen out here chop king <laughs> when you're there in the hospital <laughs> and you divide those books by the amount of quality writers you get <laughs> oh so so there's gonna be at least three titles coming out of it i imagine they're hoping for some type of ultimate spider-man like success here yeah. but i don't see that really happening jim because dc isn't selling very well yeah, no, that, other than Batman, problem. like they normally are, but Ultimate Spider Man is on honestly giving people something that they wanted. They wanted Peter Parker and Mary mm -hmm. Jane married. No one asked for like, yeah, a younger version of Bruce yeah. Wayne with no money. No one asked for Superman that arrived on Earth when he was 19. Nobody asked for Wonder Woman that's Indiana Jones. Yeah, well, and I think the problem with the DC characters right now and how they've been treated is that, yeah, you can sit there and say Spider-Man, Mary Jane, you have that big thing, but there's so many different things that have gone wrong with these characters because they are shuffling through a lot of writers. Batman, I, I would say, typically doesn't have this amount of revolving doorness that, that you have, and each one that comes in ends up kind of doing something else wrong, and now it's a pile. Like, I don't know what I'd say of what I needed except back to the basics deal, and, you know, maybe that will be this. But overall, yeah, there, there's a lot of problems with a lot of these characters. And I don't think just one imprint is going to change that with the writers that they mentioned. So, I'd Mr. Say, Bain, yeah. obviously, you've worked in corporate comic yeah. books. And we're kind of talking about the revolving door nature. You know, back in the day, it wasn't abnormal to see a writer show up and last five years on a book no. or even uh, 10 years on a book. And that's unheard of right now. Well, the reason for that was was the editors that we had were also serious storytellers. Uh, mm -hmm. Both uh, Denny O'Neill and Archie Goodwin were my editors at one point, and both of them wrote enthralling comics. Denny, of course, uh, introduced social issues into Green Lantern and Green Arrow in such a way that it was entertaining. You read the book. Sure, there was a message there, but he wasn't insulting people, and, and there weren't vast blocks of, of words covering up the pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. And Archie Goodwin, of course, wrote wrote Manhunter, among many other things, which uh, on which Walt Simonson exploded. Uh, 
Uh, those editors understood storytelling. I don't think modern editors understand storytelling and they forget the number one law. The number one rule of storytelling is it's your job to entertain and you must never lose sight of that fact. Number two is show, don't tell. And that means that any information you can impart to the reader visually that advances the story without words, you should. Save your words for characterization. And number three is be original. And that's not too tough if you're a good writer because we're all unique human beings. And when we bring our experience to a story, naturally, we're going to draw upon our, uh, upon our own experience and impressions. And that goes back to uh, uh, to number two, show, don't tell. But, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, you're saying like if you ended up having a story and then Denny O'Neill said to you, you know, hey, Mike, you know, you might want to change. You, you'd probably like listen to him and talk to him. Right. I because would. Of, but his deal. And I don't see these new editors of having any sort of pedigree that that writers would take them. No, uh, you know, I, as that. I have to say that in my entire tenure, both Marvel and D.C., which lasted years and years, uh, I cannot remember an instance of an editor coming in and asking me to change something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the reason is that I, I was lucky enough to understand story and what constitutes story. And once you understand that, you're not going to make a wrong turn. I had a teacher in college. His name was, uh, uh, oh, I, I'm blanking, but I'm going to tell you what he said. It was, you make them laugh a little bit. You make them cry a little bit. You scare the hell out of them. And that's entertainment. Yeah, yeah it's a roller coaster. I mean... It's just a literary roller coaster. And, and there's, you can't just have random shit happen. It has to seem like, okay, this makes sense from one thing to the next. Um, but at the same time, it goes in a direction you didn't expect. You have to both be, it has to be unpredictable. <clears throat> but when you look back, and look from where you came, where you got to, it has to make logical sense on how you got there. Oh, I can see this entire through line. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And do you think that because a lot of people are coming from like different media and stuff, that that's the problem? And there's no editors to kind of guide them? No, it's because they don't know how to entertain, they don't yeah, know how yeah. to write. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but what Doc said is absolutely right. The, uh, the perfect ending should come as both a complete surprise and, on reflection, inevitable. Yes, exactly. I mean, I, I feel like that this is anyone that's read a book in their life. I hate to say it, but I feel like some of these people have never read anything except for, like, a news story. They're comics. Like, I, I don't even think half of them have read many comics. Um, and that's the problem. They're they they just read they read Twitter, they read a little bit of fan fiction that's you know poorly structured. Um, they understand what the idea of a plot is, but they don't know how to execute one. They don't they just think it's the thing that happens next. Yeah, um, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and there's never any thought to why did that happen. Well, you know, the uh, I think that um, there's actually from the the South Park guys, there's a really good video out there that I always suggest that that new writers watch because they break it down really simply, where they said that you know everything in your story has to be this happened, like you start out with this is the event, this happens, and then because of that this happens. The character makes this decision. Because of that decision, this happens. Like everything has to build on uh, upon each other, you know, so that your foundation gets, you know, broader and broader and broader. And then when you bring it home, it all makes sense to the reader. That's the way that storytelling works. Um, cause, you know, we always tried, yeah, cause yeah, and effect. Cause, cause, decision, effect, decision, cause, decision, effect. And, and that's kind of your, your, your progress. Uh, that's right. That's because each story, at least the type of stories we do, is a series of tension and release. Tension mm -hmm. and release. Uh, if the like plot goes like this, <laughs> there's no story. Because yeah. the, the protagonist has to uh, uh, face challenges. So the plot goes like this. He's up, he's down, he's up, he's down. Uh, and that's how you create drama. 
Yeah, and then a show like Breaking Bad, where you would build and you would build and you would build, and then there would be that you know tension, 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 release, and then you'd be like, ah, oh. and then you would immediately find out that the uh, the release of that tension just cool. like that was a blockade that was in the way of something even worse coming into his life. Yeah, new tension. Um, yeah, new tension, and, uh, and and that's the way that you build a serialized story. Bad. I had to go outside because there was a cat on my porch. Uh, and the dude is singing Purple Rain right now. Oh, nice. One of the worst traditions I've ever heard, Man. but I heard him throw it to the crowd, and they were all with him. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> you mean an actual cat? An actual cat? No, no, there's a cat on my porch, so I went to go get it off my porch because I don't want cats pooping on my porch. And there's a little resto bar down oh, the street oh. from me. There's a dude cranking out Purple Rain on the karaoke machine. And I was like, did he just throw it to the crowd? I was like, that would have been my move. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't do the... I thought you meant the cat was singing Purple Rain. No, I was really though. confused. I thought he was calling the guy cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My bad. You no, know that uh, Prince was, was a Seventh-day Adventist, and so was Larry Graham, who was bass player for Sly and the Family Stone. And yep. they used to hook up in Minneapolis and go door to door in suburban neighborhoods knocking on the door. Uh, and when the person answered, they say, uh, uh, good morning, ma'am or sir. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Can you imagine them knocking on your door? You open the door and there's right. Prince and Larry Graham there with Bibles in their hands. <laughs> you, perfect. I'd have that conversation. I'd be like, yeah, no. yes, I do. I'd probably yell his name first. <laughs> my, my, they, my they clear my calendar for as long as this is going to take. <laughs> I, I would also ask for Prince to sing me the... Yes. Uh, you know he he's got to sing me into in a in a convincing way to uh, you know whatever his his preaching is he has to do it all. Yeah, he's got to sing you to well. salvation. Doc. And uh, Larry Graham could provide the bass. He could do it with his voice too, because Larry yeah. Graham's got this voice that spans like eight octaves. Yeah. And no one would Very ever nice. believe you, Doc. You would be you would be like, so I uh, I answered the door this morning. <laughs> It's Prince and Larry kid. Graham, and uh, Prince sang me the entire New Testament. <laughs> yeah, people will be like, "Why? What are you? Why well, Larry you, why Graham was doing the bass. Was this a bit? What are you doing?" And you'd be yeah. like, "This actually happened." <laughs> that was a Skid on Chappelle show where they played basketball with. Man, yes, with Prince fed him pancakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Doc's yelling him. Sing it to Delirious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and oh yeah, I yeah, Chris, Chris be like, uh, what? corrected me. Prince was a Jehovah's Witness, not a Seventh Day Adventist. I had a good uh, experience with the Seventh Day Adventist because they have a hospital here. And when I got dengue fever, that's where they had to send me. If you never had dengue fever, it's not very fun. It took me three days to finally uh, be healthy again. But they call it bone break fever. Oh, so it was quite painful. Maybe. Maybe that's what I've had this Sounds week. Sounds sexy. <laughs> I don't think you can get dengue fever unless you're like in Asia. I think it's. Oh, a, I don't know. I don't know, Wes. There's a lot of people just just coming into the country right now, just bringing all sorts of stuff. Maybe I don't know if you heard. <laughs> well, you don't get it from people. You get it from mosquitoes. How oh, they're bringing those too. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. A little Prince side side quest. That's very good. I'm glad my Purple Rain story went somewhere. Well, it's yeah. 420 after all, so that's how. <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of the 420 peoples in here, but uh, I, I don't know, uh, Jim. I don't see this uh, particularly changing the, the tide no. of DC comics, but what do you think of the name Absolute Universe? Because when you think of DC and Absolute, you think of their really big, like, mm-hmm. omnibus or hardcover yeah. collections and stuff. Yep, I even saw, I think Doc said that he, he thought that that was pretty good. I, I actually like the name. I think it's pretty cool. I, I, I do. I, yeah. I think that Absolute, it, it's synonymous with DC. Uh, yep. Both the absolute editions, as well as they also did um, back in the '90s and early 2000s, when they do reprints of important uh, single issues, uh, especially like um, some of the the, the Vertigo books uh, that didn't that kind of took a little while to catch on. Um, they re-release like the reprint was called like Absolute Preacher Number One, and it was a reprint of the first issue of preacher and they did a number of those they did an absolute swamp thing that was also a reprint of swamp thing number one from the vertigo line so absolute the term is very synonymous Mm -hmm. with with dc so doing it as their universe i i like it yeah i do too very nice so you're ready to jump on board for absolute batman doc um (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, well, uh, um, 
see, here's the thing. I still want the the last two issues of my uh, uh, All Star Goddamn Batman. Yeah. Um, I want my Jim Lee, Frank Miller, Crazy Steve Batman. To I want those last two issues. Dude. God damn it! You really hold it against the publishers and creators. You haven't forgiven Grant Morrison for something he did 15 years ago, and you you still haven't forgiven Frank Miller and Jim Lee and DC Comics. Hey, look, when you quit shit halfway through, I don't for you convinced me to buy into this shit. Then you stop. Fuck you. Finish your story, bitch. Man, how do you feel about Kevin Smith? Because he stopped two stories without finishing them. Yeah, well, I think he's a weak yeah a bullseye bitch. story and a in a, a Batman book, right? Yeah, and and for a long time he had that Daredevil one too, mm-hmm. um, and the Black Cat. Um, there so three of them. Yeah. Um. So you know he's a weepy bitch, and I've thought he's a weepy bitch for a long time. Well, you want you want to talk about people that just sold their soul? That that's Kevin Smith. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, Mister Baron? Do you think uh, alternate universes with differing versions of the characters that are established are, in the end, helpful? Uh, well, if they're well written, I mean that's a key to everything. Is you have a writer who knows how to entertain, uh, and well, how do you entertain? You use every trick in the book. There's a million ways to entertain people. Uh, one is you create a fascinating character. Sherlock Holmes is the best example I can think of because he's probably the most universally recognized fictional character in history. And there are far more Sherlock Holmes stories written since the death of Conan Doyle than he wrote in his lifetime. But the trick to Sherlock Holmes' uh, uh, success is that he's fascinating when he's written in new stories. The people who write him now understand his personality uh, and the type of things he says, and they're entertaining, they're abrupt. And that's do, that's why the success of Sherlock Holmes continues. Number two is you create a fascinating scenario. Uh, and Jurassic World is, is the best example I can think of. Just the idea of a theme park where you can interact with clone dinosaurs is intriguing. Uh, and number three is you have a seductive narrative voice, and that's almost impossible to find in comics, which is a visual uh, uh, form of communication, but, but you can do it. I mean, a good writer knows how to picture things that intrigue the reader and advance the story. Uh, the most important question in fiction is what happens next? Because if the reader doesn't care, he's not going to turn the page. So you have to make the reader care. And how do you do that? Every trick in the book. But uh, I always stress, be original with your dialogue. Use your dialogue to characterize people and make sure that it resonates with the reader. And examples of, of that are, face it, tiger, you just hit the jackpot. We're still saying that phrase a half century after it first appeared. Uh, and also, it's clobbering time because when they first appeared, it was the first time. And in the context of the story, it really resonated. But now you read a comic and, and they're saying, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore and we have to talk and move at people. But if you ever find yourself writing that, you just stop and push yourself away from the uh, keyboard and rethink what you're doing. Man, I think I just saw it's clobber in time and kick ass number eight. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. see, now you don't want to re- recycle somebody else's stuff. Uh, yeah, it's just this lazy. It's lazy writing. Well, that no, no. I know, think they were trying to show that they were comic book geeks, so that, that, that's what they said when they jumped in it, and then she she diced everybody up. Well, that's that pretty good. That's, that's legit. That's legit. Yeah. It was a little moment of characterization. Yeah. I like that one. Did you read Kick Ass, Aaron? I did. I did. I uh, read it. Uh, like I read every issue as it came out. So I got through. One I remember being I shocked that Kick-Ass. there was a book called Kick Ass. I was, I was so. Uh... <laughs> That's right. And it was a movie too. Yeah, I got through Wanted, and I got through Kick Ass on the books, and I, I've seen the movies as well. Kick Ass basically stays almost a hundred percent in line with the comic book, whereas Wanted diverges from it oh, almost God. immediately. Yeah, immediately. And I think there's a reason that one was successful and the other one wasn't. Well, considering mm-hmm. that uh, Wanted should have just had Eminem in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> that. Well, yeah. maybe he just wanted to make Eight Mile. I think that's the only movie he did. I know, but but know. I think even if it had Eminem in it, the story would have, still would have sucked because they didn't stick to the source material. Aaron, that's what you got to do. I remember being really jarred in that movie it's when pretty, uh, yeah. when uh, Morgan Freeman said "mf"er. 
because I couldn't recall a time when I'd ever heard him talk. Yeah. And it's it like seemed like Grandma it seemed like he was Percy. uncomfortable that he's like, now nah, kill this mother effer. You know, like he does that in the movie and it's really jarring. And and you know that on set he was he probably had a really hard time. He was like, now kill this fine young gentleman. And they're like, Morgan, that's not the line. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, let me go again. No, you know? they tried, <laughs> what happened is they tried to get Samuel Little. Yeah, trash. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Right. They might well, have there's no threatened. loom in the comic Jack book. And it's better yeah. for Stop Samuel Jackson from saying I'm ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, everything about Wanted was, I mean, first, you have James McAvoy instead of Eminem. You have Angelina Jolie instead of Halle Berry. You have mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman instead of Samuel L. Jackson. And you added that whole loom thing, got rid of, like, the secret society of supervillains mm -hmm. and, and went with, like, this kind of They're like assassins assassins guild yeah. mm -hmm. th thing that like they're a that almost like it's fucking assassins creed it's like they took an assassins creed premise and slapped on and then so Gary's got a point wanted? though he said if they made a faithful wanted movie it would have been banned in 30 oh it would have there's oh, it, okay. well it, sure, there is yeah, so I much mean... bad stuff in that it's <laughs> way over the top and and I I'll be honest I as much as I love uh, Mark Miller and I love uh, love his stuff Wanted is one that I did not enjoy when I because it's a villain origin story, story. Yeah. And, and, yeah that's yeah, the problem like, and, too yeah um but I will say that like there were things that I enjoyed like I enjoyed the fact that there was a villain named Shithead I was yeah like, Shithead, Shithead is amazing Shithead. I was like this is very this is very juvenile but yeah. I'm here for it because it works in the context he's of this. a mixture and of Clayface and uh, and Serpentor and what it's this yeah it's and I think Mister Rick I think Mister Rick. Mr. Yeah. Rick is Rick a fantastic uh, villain name and was a fantastic villain. So um, that we didn't get that in the movie, I was I was super yeah. disappointed. Also, would have cost a lot more money since they mm -hmm. were going to multiverses and all kinds of stuff. Let's hear the 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 people's nerd says honestly they should have just called it Earth Two. Really? Yeah. I mean, but they've already got Earth Two. They already have that. It would confuse people. They. Yeah. I I feel like here's the problem. You instead of you know doing something like Mike here would do and just go and create your own idea, you have all these new ideas, you're just going back to the well and doing the exact same thing, but you're giving the audience that's currently pissed off, yeah, what they want, but not just undoing the things that are pissing them off. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're just making a second property for them. <laughs> From the pitches I've read, or I've heard, I haven't read them, obviously the information's not out, I don't think lifelong Superman fans want this version of Superman. I don't think Batman fans want this version of Batman, and I don't even think Wonder Woman fans will want this version of Wonder Woman, even though it has the better pitch. Yeah, the problem with this, though, too, is that they've shown that they don't really get the characters and can't really get, you know, things going in the main thing, so you can't you can't really rely on them to know what people want because they really are not giving it to us anyway. So it, it isn't, I was going to say what doc said though, like, I hope they don't think this is smoke and mirrors that they're just going to throw this out here and all the other problems go away because they don't. And people are mad about a lot of stuff and that they're not going to forget that. Very nice. Calb says most writers don't want to entertain. They want to lecture and tell everyone what they, they want to sleep with and what's going on in the middle East. Not well, yeah, yeah, I mean, he right. has a point there, I and mean, that that's that's the disease that runs rampant through most corporate comics these days is people who who don't understand how to entertain, but they have an agenda. And we don't want agenda driven comics. I mean, there's there's a way to tell a story with a social message that's entertaining. Just look at To Kill a Mockingbird or The Grapes of Wrath. Those are fabulously entertaining novels that also have an important social message, uh, but they follow the three rules. One, they entertain. Two, they show, don't tell. And three, they're highly original. Or Jim Starlin's Death in the Family, which has Joker basically as a, like an Iranian the Ayatollah or something? <laughs> he crazy, diplomat. He's a, he's he a diplomat. He's a diplomat. Yeah, yeah. He's getting scuds and stuff. Yeah. Huh. When I was so a kid, I thought it was... He's got the garb and everything. <laughs> When I was a kid, I thought that was such a ridiculous premise. And now I now I look at the UN and I'm like, oh yeah, the Joker would fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> Grateful dog. Go find Punisher Empty Quarter in G Force. Thank you, dog. I would also point out Intruder with art by uh, Bill Reinhold, which is uh, my personal favorite among the graphic novels I did. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a shame what happened to, to Punisher. Did you did, I, I don't know if you saw this, uh, Jim. But in the solicitations for Marvel Comics in July, oh, I saw they say it. 
<laughs> Jason Aaron is going to mm-hmm. do for Namor what he did for Punisher. Yep. I, I, like, ended up, I had a video on it. I'm reading it. I'm like, okay, everything seems good. And then, oh, God. When when they mentioned that, I'm like, you just blew it. You blew so, it. Like, so you're going to turn him yeah. into what? Yeah. Like, if you miss the real Punisher, uh, I created a book called Private American, which is up on my website, baroncomics.com. And that's what uh, the Punisher should be. Uh, private American, when you meet him, he's down on the southern border interrupting a, uh, a gang rape of an underage child. I don't know if you know this, but every woman who crosses the southern border is raped as part of the price of, of uh, crossing. Uh, and when word got out about that, the left went crazy. The Daily Coast, which is a far left hate site, ran an article which headlined, Punisher creator Mike Barron releases another racist AF comic book. Now, first of all, I didn't create the Punisher. And secondly, the person who wrote it has never read anything I've written because at that time, Private American hadn't been released. Just the premise. Well, if you read a news article and it has AF in the in the headline, uh, you Plus. are not a journalist. Yeah, that's right. It's some child. <laughs> HH of the guys at Sigma Comics. Shout out to all my brothers. Wedding day, on my brother's wedding day, keep it tuned to Thinking Critical and support this great team. And then make sure to back Nexus from my mentor, Mike Barrett. Thank you, Congratulations to your brother. Yeah, and I should point out that Harold's comic, Calico, is uh, Punisher for Animals. And it's a great comic, and and you should check it out at sigmacomics.com. Absolutely. They've got uh, manga, if you prefer, prefer that form factor as well. So he's meeting a lot of customer needs there. So HH seems like a really classy guy. I bet like all the, the groomsmen and the best men all have like flasks and stuff at this wedding. It's going to be nice. He is a classy guy. Isn't he? Yeah, he Like is. on the tuxedo, probably some classy. lovely bridesmaids. Uh, scope them out and all that stuff. I miss weddings. I haven't been to a wedding in like 10 years now. Oh, we were at one last year. Uh, was outdoors on a creek and the bride rode up to the uh, altar on a horse. Beautiful. That's yeah. the way you do it. And uh, thank you very much to HH for the continued support. Nerd says, could you guys pull up a bit of EBS's live stream? He's showing the cyber farm car right now. Uh, no audio needed. Now, I'm probably not going to pull up somebody else's yeah. live stream. If you want to go check it out, <laughs> it's, uh, it's going on right now. Yeah, check out the cyber frog car. It's pretty amazing. It is kind of cool. Sure it's very, very cool. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. Yeah, we, generally, we, we generally don't like do like EFAP stuff on, on, uh, on aficionados. Right. I understand. Yeah. But uh, hopefully the, the car is cool. I like it when people come up with inventive ways to tie in with their comic books with new products and stuff like that. And I'm sure the car is absolutely awesome. Uh, Federico de la Casa, Mr. Baron, perhaps these writers don't want to entertain. They want to do everything but that, and they don't love comics. Everybody can tell, uh, and they say it. Well, I, I think Fred, Federico has a point there, except uh, that they really do love comics. They just don't understand them. The problem with comics is it's such a trans. Uh, uh, medium that everybody thinks that they can do a comic and everybody does, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to be any good. It's, it's a form and, and what you do with it is up to you. And, and again, Sturgeon's law ap- applies. Now I think a lot of people are uh, enamored with the idea of comics and what they could be. Right. You know, a lot of people have been very uh, successful with them, but not people, a lot of people using the medium correctly today. Lots of, uh, Tell and not showing going on, which is very absolutely. What do you need, Wes? What do you need, Wes? You don't need to pay writers. Just uh, just fire up the old Chat GPT. <laughs> well, it's true need. that a lot of people will write for free just to say they did a comic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I looking for here? Well, that's, I mean, uh, that's that's very true. I mean, look, we uh, I used to have um, a publisher tell me that when uh, it would be like, you know, hey, that you're not going to pay. You're not. This budget isn't enough to get a good cover from this person that you want me to get a cover from. And uh, they would say something like, "Oh, sell them on the dream, you know, sell them on the dream of comics." And it's like, "What's what's the dr- what's the dream of comics exactly?" But there are people that are so excited to do a comic or to work on a character that they really love because they do. The publishers do take advantage of our love of this medium and our love of these characters uh, by these great creators that have come before us. Uh, they definitely try to take advantage of that. Very nice. Lane says, "So this is actually Doc, not you, Doc." For your next review choices, exceptional X Men, Phoenix, or NYX, you can choose one to review. You'll suggest Phoenix. Chance it could be good. Um, 
and well, why I, dunk. I, I, I'll go for it. Honestly, I'll go. I'll go with barista men. Um, <laughs> and you know, is that NYX? No, that's exceptional X Men. Okay, um, well, that's the one. Speaking that you of want. speaking of wrestling, when uh, when it was suggested, there's a chance that that Phoenix book could be good. I immediately heard Vince McMahon's theme. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> no chance in hell. <laughs> yeah, hey guys, I got a bail. I want to thank you for having me on. Thank you, Mike. Hey, Mike, do you have time for one more question? Because there's one more addressed directly to you. Sure. Grateful Dog says, uh, Mr. Baron, how do you go about fleshing Microchip out in his origin story and providing a relatable yet also compelling story back Nexus? Uh, well, Dog, I, I would have to go back and reread those, those books because that was a long time ago. Uh, but Microchip came about because I said, well, the Punisher can't do this all by himself. All this, these gadgets and gear, he's got to have some tech support. And so Microchip was born. I had a very specific idea of who or what he should be and who should play him. Uh, and the guy that played him in uh, Punisher War Journal is the guy I would have chosen to play him. And incidentally, Ray Stevenson was the best on-screen Punisher, even though the movie wasn't, movie wasn't much to write home about. And I, I just want to remind folks that today's 420. We have a special on uh, Florida Man. Uh, and if you cite the code 42024, you get 20% off the book. Very nice. And there's a link to Mike's uh, eShop in the video description. Go to the MikeBaron.com one, and you can find yourself some Florida Man and celebrate 420 with a little discount. Thanks, Wes. Well, thank you very much, yeah. Mike. I really appreciate it. Brother. Thanks, guys. Same. Hey, thanks, very Mike. Nice. See you soon. All right, Doc. So you got one opportunity to talk this back. Are you sure you want exceptional instead of an NYX? Look, NYX, um, I mean, are we bringing back, like, Laura Kinney underage no, no, it, it's Ms. masochistic She's, hooker? NYX um, has her. Yeah, I don't know masochistic hooker. Well, that's where <laughs> that, she But I know. Oh, I know. Where, yeah, came, yeah. where she originated from. I just read it. It's not good. Uh, yeah. I Yeah. Not very good. <laughs> not um, very good. No. I mean, well, honestly. It's in Jackson Lanzig. It's time yeah. to give these guys a chance, Doc. They haven't had any um, opportunities yet. Yeah, they haven't had any opportunities at all. No, nobody's ever given these guys a chance. That's all they need. They just need a chance. They need that opportunity. And now, now I'm sitting there having the eight mile song going through my head. Um, <laughs> but no, no, no. Like, um, yeah, there is about a zero percent chance that that book is is good. Look, Eviewing's written a couple of things. They were that weren't terrible. I mean, they, they weren't good. They didn't sell, but they weren't bad. Like her, her time on Ironheart was probably, I mean, that was about as best as you could expect out of that character and that writer. They weren't bad. They were just Stephanie not Phillips particularly didn't have good. Cap Wolf. I don't no. care. <laughs> Uh, uh, blah, look, um, you know, infinite. Time. Oh my God, Captain infinite... America was a werewolf. That's so funny and it's so random. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it, it, inf wolf. infinite monkeys, infinite typewriters. The law of inevitability says that she'll write something good because she's been given seven thousand chances in like eight months. All right. So God. how how, how, is how is modern is? comics? How has modern comics become the disproving ground for the idea that if you spend a hundred hours doing anything, you'll you'll master yeah. that discipline? <laughs> I thought, uh, it was, I thought it was a thousand it? hours. Yeah, yeah I think oh, right. yeah, maybe, maybe, that, maybe it's a hundred a year or a thousand. I, I would know, say my like channel that. is proof that that's not true. <laughs> I, definitely put it I disagree. Go watch your and early my marriage. Stuff. Go watch your early. It stuff. was rough. Really more, you were way more awkward. Way more, the way, the new, as awkward as I am right now. Uh, you were uh, way more awkward in the beginning, and you really uh, you've got a nice like a nice cadence now. You can get a good well, rant going, and, and you're oh, on my. fire. <laughs> definitely, uh, I feel like I've improved. Uh, Nerd says so far DC's best attempt at Ultimate Universe was Green Lantern Earth One. I guess that's why they have these wild ideas nobody asked for in Absolute. I love Green Lantern Earth One, Jim. It's such a good yeah. story. And a lot of people were talking about the Earth One stuff again, like Doc said about All Star. The you didn't get the volumes that were promised even in that and a lot of people are saying this kind of feels like them just doing earth one again but again that, that green lantern earth one was was pretty darn good hey remember how great that adam hughes apps or all-star wonder woman was remember remember oh oh, oh well, i'm sorry it's only really announced they didn't even start that with doc uh, he, he worked on it for two years 
and never got a single issue completed. Well, hopefully yeah. he got paid. I'm, how do you work? How do you work two years and not complete a single issue? In, in fairness, he was doing a lot of variant cover or a lot of covers for um, DC titles at that point. So, well, he remember it took him almost a year and a half to do the two issues of uh, Gen Thirteen Ordinary Heroes that he did. Well, that's true. I do want to say, just going back to like some of the recommendations for you, Doc, I do think, I will say this as an editor, I think that if Eve Ewing had strong editorial, if she had an actual mentor, uh, which nobody in comics seems to have anymore, none of the editorial pool seems capable of it. Uh, and I mean, I'm even hearing stories that like guys like Tim Sheridan have begged for editorial oversight. Mm -hmm. and been given nothing i've been begging for out. him to have it too <laughs> exactly right exactly right but like you know but i want to be fair true. i want to be fair when i hear these things is you've got you know and we've often said like you know we we talk about the writers a lot but really you know there needs to be uh editorial involved yeah um and that's a big part of the failing here uh is you have people like e-viewing who i think could be a very competent uh, you know very competent comic writer and maybe she could eventually get to being a really good comic writer but she's got nobody to help her along well and, and so that, these scripts yeah. are coming in their first drafts and they're just getting pushed through uh you know by these incompetent assistant mm -hmm. editors and and you know these probably overworked editors at these companies and uh, that's a big part of why we're getting the crap that we're getting yeah and, and with this absolute maybe that will be a limit you get good writers and then they can kind of do their thing but maybe like a scott snyder who did have you know that workshop and stuff maybe he'll even you know, bring some other writers in and be able to help them. Uh, oh, we've seen the writers that Scott Snyder well, brings into the workshop. Yeah. Luke Kennedy Johnson was in there. He's a good writer. Good Jim, enough. Okay. You know, Tiny. Once again, law of inevitability. <laughs> Stop Anybody? clock right twice a day, Wes. Yeah. He was Josh Williamson's mentor. These were the blurst of times, is what they yeah, <laughs> you end up where all of this deal is. I, I just, I want to be hopeful that this could be, but it just, I'm not getting the vibes from anybody He's, that this is like exciting. Uh, it and feels like a desperation. Play. It is feels like a desperate and it feels like a, a, you know, not to use the phrase, but us too, you know, Hey, look at that Marvel deal. They're really getting it going on with this, but it just doesn't feel the same. It just doesn't. Well, DC uh, and let's be perfectly honest. DC for the past 30, 35 years has been the, but what about, wait, wait, hold on. We, we can do that too um publisher they did it with um you know turning how jordan evil they did it with um they did it with you know don't New you 52. dare say red hood no well i mean i i can't because they happened almost simultaneously they were producing at the same time they, they were produced yeah. the same the same way i can't say that like doom patrol and x-men yeah were, were you know x-men was copied off doom x-men was an, absolutely a rip off of doom patrol or like they Ant were being Buck, published like... at the same time they were being developed doom patrol time. came out a couple years earlier no it came out like two months earlier complete rip off doc that thing um, that you love is a knockoff of a DC thing. Yeah, it was two months earlier. They didn't have time to that. that they mm -hmm. don't have that kind of turnaround time. Um, even back Insider then. training. But like All Star was there at uh, ultimate the first time. Absolute is their ultimate the second time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, DC's been the we can do it. Even their even their movies was oh we can have an Avengers level movie. Too, and then they rush to get shit done just so they can say we're doing the same thing. Like deceased was Marvel zombies. Yeah, you had a bunch of things, and Marvel does it too sometimes. Yeah, like you know, X Men. Blood, Blood Hunt is DC versus vampires. Yeah, it's DC. Versus well, vampires. Uh, remember whenever Marvel did Identity Disc <laughs> right after, <laughs> right when um, uh, Brian. Uh, Metzger? Brad Meltzer. Brad Meltzer mm -hmm. was doing Identity Crisis. You know, Identity Disc. It really. <laughs> I don't well, know. What do they call Marvel, Marvel, and, Marvel and DC have been all about identity yeah, since yeah. then. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of an identity crisis, and, and and then it just talks about who they like to fuck on that disc. Well, Gallup <laughs> nice. says the left want to screw everything they see. So that would make except them for, except for pretty things. horned up. I pan, pan, no, no, I there's a term the for it. What pan, are they, what pansexual. They it's pansexual. pansexual. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Wants to bang everything. Maybe that's what I'm including. I don't that's, get a, it. that's an yeah. awful lot of syllables for whore. <laughs> <laughs> I I just miss the old term trisexual. You know, they'll try anything. 
Yeah. Men, women, chickens, mud, See, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then he asked, what do you think Pride Month is for? Oh, I think in theory it's to Sin? celebrate the uh, the LGBTQ no. community. That's what it's for. Well, it's to sell a lot of corporate product. Yeah, with, it's become uh, rainbows a... Rainbows on it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a mer- marketing ploy. It's, it's like Christmas, Look, but it's... better. <laughs> well, it's like, you, know, you, you know what Pride Month is? It's Love Day from The Simpsons. Yes. It's like it started out as this idea, and now it's this corporate thing of like, well, how do or we put out a bunch day. of merch that we can sell? You know, um, it's oh, it's, I wanted Sir Huggington, but you gave me Sir Loves a lot, and then it, that, all that stuff is in the trash at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's in order to get to part fools with their money, um, th- so that the they can get the idiot communists to somehow become corporate pay pigs that's the it. best meme the best meme i've seen is of uh willem dafoe from spider-man and they just they just put lipstick on him um, yep. and it says corporations during pride month and it's him going you know i'm something of a homosexual myself yes <laughs> did they take that from boondock saints because that is one of the worst reveals mm-hmm. in movie history <laughs> <Really? laughs> fuck no way <laughs> common sense says positives i imagine he's talking about ultimate universe Kid John Kent, Bat and Cat gets married, Harley evil again. Fourth gen heroes get more respect like Tim Drake, elevate other heroes like Hawkman. I don't think you that's think that there's a any of that's happening. No, uh, yeah, the, yeah and I, of, I don't I don't necessarily see those as any any of those as positives after they've bungled it in the regular and, universe. And there is zero percent chance that they're gonna ungayify all these characters. Sorry. Well, 0%. he doesn't mention any of that stuff. He's talking well, about no, but he's talking about get, Kid John characters Kent, being I, treated with respect again. Well, it does, he doesn't say make John Kent not gay. No, but he, he makes him a kid him again. I don't even think there'll be John Kent. I think uh, there won't be because he's, I, I know there won't be. Yeah, it's he's just literally going to have just arrived on Earth. Yeah, just arrived. Unless like, he's been stepping old. out like on, you know, Kent or something. I don't know. Namor well, is not won't be a human. Yeah. Namor is not lame, Tom Cruise, new client account. <laughs> He's not uh, lame. <laughs> Namor. Namor? Yep. No, Namor, Namor is na- is lame. Namor yeah. is super lame. Namor is pretty fucking cool. No. From what I've been told, I wouldn't expect those things to happen, on, especially early on Common Sense, but you never know. Perhaps uh, yeah, they I mean, could uh, enough too. make it better over time. We'll see. Uh, who should have been the Phoenix alongside Jean Grey? For me, I pick Hope Summers or Kid Omega. And the reason why uh, Evie Ewing's champion sucks is because of Alana Smith. Uh, the answer to this question is nobody. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I I vote for Doc. Yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I am the Phoenix, God damn it. And I'm going to just eat Marvel's offices. Yes. Yeah, I don't think anybody should be. Should be I think they should have just left the Phoenix in the, the 70s. I agree. Yeah. And if they were going to touch it, like have it not you know, kind it. of kind of connected to Rachel, but like she had the powers in you know 30 years of the future. And then when she comes back here, it, it's like very, very weak because it's somehow like time displaced Phoenix and the I was, can't, yeah, the entity can't old exist. Excaliburs. I was reading some old Excalibur's doc, and God, I miss the real Rachel Summers. Oh, yeah. Doesn't everybody? Yeah. And then, uh, as far as Lana Smith, I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah. So no, no surprises there. I uh, thank you to everybody for supporting the channel. Really appreciate that. We've also got. It says Kevin Fain. I must have got auto corrected. Mm. Let me hide that. <laughs> Kevin Fain. He's feigning that he didn't do it. He's he's feigning that he's responsible for the success. Yes, of the he MCU. is. That scene when meant. really he stood on the he stood on the shoulders of giants. So this is a weird story, uh, uh, Aaron. So Cody Ziegler goes on to a podcast for Spider Man and was laughing about the fact that Zeb Wells got a rash of shit for killing off Kamala Khan, and he's like, Zeb didn't even do that. Kevin Feige went to him and said, "Hey, I would like you to to bring Kamala Khan." more in line with what we are doing in the MCU, so we need to kill her off and bring her back as a mutant. And so they did it, and now Marvel is saying, no, that was never the plan. We were going to kill off Mary Jane. Decided not to do that, but so we killed off Kamala Khan instead. Like, their story about why it didn't happen doesn't make sense, and there's no real reason for Cody Ziggler to lie about any of this stuff. 
I mean, to, for me, it's all a big who cares because oh. she was resurrected like a month later. So it like it does death in comics doesn't matter. So I don't care if Kevin Feige was like, yeah, we need to kill Kamala Khan so that we can make her a mutant and and tie her into the X Men because dear God, he ordered the code red, Aaron. Yeah, you know, it happens. He's taking his stupid <laughs> MCU ideas and ruining comic books harder. Yeah, this, I mean, but can you ruin the comic books harder at this point? Like, it doesn't matter. Listen, None of this matters. I, I, I mean, impress it's, it's, everybody. It's all dead. That you can, it's all dead. Everything you loved is books. dead. Everything you loved is just I, like I, dragged out into a field and is rotting there. And they're just occasionally picking up the corpses and dancing them around for you and trying to convince you that it's the same thing. It's well, not. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. It's, what it's doing. It was never. A, <laughs> but here's the thing. It was never even a code red. It was like a code beige. <laughs> Like, yeah. like nobody even like. Do you remember intrigued, how Doc. much you gotta explain this code beige theory? Do you, do you remember how much everybody went? Like they were hyped up, hyped up that he was gonna do something. Everyone's and the gonna minute hate was, me. And, and the minute it was announced, everybody's like, "Oh," hmm. and, and and literally just wandered off to go do literally anything else. Hmm. Like it was the biggest. Like, oh, that was stupid, and, and like didn't even bother. Nobody cared. So it's not even a code red if anybody even gives, if nobody gives a shit. Well, did you care about the kid that dies in A Few Good Men? You didn't no. even know him. No. Also, I didn't care about that kid. Nope. I cared well, more about him. Code than, red. I cared more about him than I cared about them killing Kamala Khan. Well, yeah. Likely. The only, pe and the only people movie. who got upset are people who don't read the comics anyway. Because anybody who read, who anybody but, who reads comics knew immediately that she was going to be back. There's like, there's no way they're killing mm -hmm. this character. They've spent too long trying to force this um, character down our throats and get her. And over. they already killed um, her. They would killed her and before they, and they didn't know that. So it, it's, yeah. It, and so like all the outrage was from this audience that they court mm -hmm. that just pirates books online. If they read them at all, people that like the idea of Kamala Khan, because they like the idea of her identity, but don't actually care about her character or anything that happens, you know, in, in her comics or even following along. Well, um, not only not only that, but like the minute that she was killed, everybody knew exactly why. Yeah, like there wasn't even any, like it was the most telegraphed. Just oh, so that they can bring her back and make her a mutant because they already announced that she's a mutant in the TV show, and they're going to make it align to the TV show. Mm -hmm. every, literally every single person. I don't know, and you would actually. You know what? No, actual retarded people knew. You shouldn't say that because Jim did not see it coming. <laughs> Blindsided. No, the, the, exactly. thing that, like, the thing with with this whole deal and Cody Ziegler, like maybe this will actually be the thing that will make him not write more comics because they'll they'll blacklist him now for saying this, and then I'll be a happy. We guy. can only but hope. When you have this, whole, <laughs> the, the follow up question should have been okay. So you say this, but Kamala was in the Amazing Spider Man for quite some time and kind of he didn't do any story to set it up. I mean, I know that they're saying, Oh, it was Kevin Feige who did it, but you're the writer. And if you have to do that, then write a damn story about it and do something good that makes us care. Like the idea where I was reading the book, I did, I forgot she was even in the book. She ended up, she was working for Oscorp sitting there, keeping an eye on Norman Osborn for no reason at all. And so it did look like they forced them to put that in. And then he just said, fuck it, I'll wait until issue 26 and kill her. And then nobody's going to care because you didn't have a story. And the idea that Cody Ziegler's there, you know, defending Zeb Wells, like that's the only shitty thing he did in this. This whole run sucks. And this, this was just the icing on the Listen. cake. Cody Ziegler's just hoping hoping he gets on another show that Zeb Wells works on. Yeah, so he's yeah, suck yeah. Up to Zeb Both Wells. of those. You know, it's like nice. you know, and, and we and we say like you know, well, hopefully this means he won't get any more Marvel work, and, and yeah. you know, hopefully that is the hopefully that is the case. But you know, if you've got your choice between attaching yourself to Zeb Wells, who's doing television, or staying on the Marvel Comics train, I can yeah. tell you which one pays a lot better. And I, I'm telling you right now, a little shout out to Common Sense. I, I do like Kamala, but I like Kamala when she was actually written. good. They, they don't write her as anything now, and she just keeps popping up in these sort of things to try to make people like her, and that's not the way to do it. There's there's a way to do it, and that, it's a lot of characters like that. When people so you like me, Kamala like, Khan, are you mad at Kevin Feige for killing off one of your favorite characters? I am characters? so furious. Now, by, by that that's point, she was barely her character. 
I mean, right now, me and you, Wes, are talking about the, the best Kamala Khan we've had is in Avengers Twilight, where she's in the background, she's embiggening her fists. And, cool. You know, yeah, yeah. So they just, every, they always say, you know, there's no bad characters. There is. Bad writers, but there are. There are. But I, I did like Kamala, G. Willow Wilson stuff was pretty cool. It was different. It kind of did that. But since then, it's they just grab anybody to write her and she sucks. Well, no, they don't grab anybody. They grab a very specific well, yeah, set yeah. Of, and, uh, yeah, exactly. know, of, of poor writers Again, uh, that are based on identity. I can sit here um, and tell you all of my characters I love that people will laugh at, but I, I do like Harley Quinn, but people don't You're know big how to Blue write Beetle her guy? either. No, I, I don't like Blue Beetle. Tech, what um, other shitty characters do you like, Jim? You've got I do like Gabby. I, I oh, like, uh, you know, Honey Badger. I do like her. I like, yeah, nah, I'm not going to call her Scout. Uh, I also love Jackpot and Spider. But no, I'm making that. Oh, Jackpot. Nobody likes Jackpot, but I do like Spider. Yeah, man, the, the, Jim's the, the guy that liked the, the original turn. Jackpot. Yeah, I'm mad. This Mary Jack Jane Jackpot is in the front the, to me the and, character. <laughs> me and this one guy were forming the Jackpot League. We're going after them right now. But no, I, again, some of these characters can, and even if you don't like Kamala, you could have set up a story that at least makes sense in the book because she's not going to die in her own book because nobody's going to buy it. So they do it in Amazing Spider-Man as just like, oh, it's her doing it. And I don't believe for a second they were going to kill Mary Jane. This was always going to be the plan. And Zeb Wells just didn't want to deal with it. And like we had such great things between like Dark Web that, you know, we have talking mailboxes and nonsense. So, yeah. It's fun in Inferno. It weird because... Oh. Doc, this is the first instance since it was announced in 2019 that Kevin Feige was the chief creative officer of Marvel Comics that it appeared to do anything. Uh, yeah, that that. Well, that's because he gives a shit about the comics about as much as everyone else that's been in that 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 role in the last few years. He, like, even when um, when Joe Casada was still in that chief creative officer role, it was by the time that he had given stopped giving a shit about the comics either. The only thing he cared about was the movies. And that's all that Feige cares about. He doesn't, he still didn't care about now. He at least was in the movie side. Unlike Joe Casada, who was just using it as his gateway to the movie side. Um, but he doesn't give a shit about the comics. It's become very clear. He doesn't give a shit about the comics. And he, so now he wants to, I think honestly, the reason why he wanted that role is because he made look, let's let's be honest about who Kevin Feige is. He's a kind of middling producer that made his success and name in Hollywood by not fucking with shit that worked in comics and not getting you know too egotistical about making sure his vision was the one that ended up on screen. Well, he did that for the first three phases, and it worked. Um, and, he had every, talented filmmakers to to you he, know to he had, stand on the shoulders of. He had talented filmmakers, and he knew what not to fuck with in the comics. Well, now he let his ego grow, and he decides, I'm going to start making these creative decisions. I'm going to start changing things. And doing things that, that didn't work in the comics because I'm good enough to make it work now. Well, and what is the response from everybody? Dude, you got successful by just copying the shit that worked in the comics. So why don't you go back to just copying the shit that works in the comics? Well, now he gets to control what's in the mm -hmm. comics. So that excuse goes away too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he made the, you know, big error that he thought maybe Zeb Wells would would write a story again i don't i don't think it's awful that he was trying to get kamala khan to get in line with the you know the other multi but the, the, they didn't do it i mean you just ended up when we said it you said it doc when she died it was a joke i mean you you it was it was it was it. that whole thing too was like peter holding Kamala Khan as if like the best friend and lover had died or something like that. He barely knew her. He's like, like oh my was, god, you're the best. Oh like it god. was Superman holding fucking Supergirl. Yeah, like Supergirl. Girl. I was going to say, that it's exactly what it was. And well, it just was laughable. It was laughable. But Jim, everybody so loves right. Kamala. That's the thing that we're yeah, supposed to take yeah. away from this is that every hero, even Captain America, is like big fan. Mm -hmm. I just, I follow you. I follow yes. your adventures. And you're like, Cap, why are you following this uh, this underage girl's adventures so exactly. closely? Exactly. 
what's going adventures. on. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, like all of these adult heroes that are like, you know, uh, absolutely in love with <laughs> creeping their girl. Instagram. Yeah. But hell. again, because that's how they, they end up without having any effort, they want to elevate the character in a way that we all talked about it before, that it's just lip service nonsense. But yeah, Cap should be doing other things. Them, them following the adventures of a teenage of a, girl, of, right? Of a 15 year old yeah, girl. Yeah, that, that yeah. You know what? Right. We put people in jail for that kind of thing. It's exactly. called stalking. <laughs> Creeper. Listen, America. when people when people ask, like, you know, um, ask me, like, you know, hey, if you could write a Marvel character, you know, would it be Captain America? Would it be, you know, like, just let's just say that you had free reign. Um, and I usually tell them that uh, I would want uh, Captain Marvel or Kamala Khan, mm -hmm. and it blows their mind. And I just, I have to tell him. I didn't him, realize like, you were a raging feminist. You could be the greatest. I, look, I, I would have to know, could I actually get these characters over? If these characters had good stories and they were written well and they were written likable, could they actually be popular? Because at one time, I really it's loved Carol Danvers as a character. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's not the audience that's the problem. It's the, the creators that are the problem. <laughs> they can't, you know, they can't put people on these books that are there to entertain. Uh, so can you know do i think that as a concept kamala khan can work absolutely she's a young teen hero how many times have we seen that work mm -hmm. um you know that's like one of the the cornerstones of the marvel universe that's how spider-man got started that's so how can invincible it work did yes recently and the problem yeah, though, invincible is, though, when you have these you know people on it and they want to you know go against and fight with the fans then it almost feels like it's tainted like if you were on it aaron you'd have to fight that at first and that would be fine. Them, you know? That would yeah, be fine yeah. because I think that at the very least, the people who do know me, if I was announced on a book like that, would be like, okay, well, I'm interested now to see yeah, what yeah. he's going to do. Because, you know, can he, you know, can he walk the talk? Is he always talking about like, you know, story and about character and things like that? And he now he's been handed this big, you know, pile of chicken shit. Can he well, make chicken salad? Next thing you Remember. know, Kamala Khan is a card carrying Republican. She grows out an enormous <laughs> beard. <Yep>. She's <laughs> talking about her fucking dolls, aka action figures yeah. all the time. Wait a, no, wait a minute. I work. recognize this character. Are you, are you trying to make me a self insert? Because I'm not a card <laughs> I'm not a Republican at all. Shaves her head. <laughs> oh. Hey, but, you know, here, here's the thing. That's not an unprecedented thing for, for like talented writers to do. Chris Claremont wanted X-Men because it was a canceled book mm -hmm. that he wanted an opportunity. A, he got the opportunity to try new shit on it. And B, because he wanted to prove he was a nobody at the time. He wanted to prove that he had the chops to make a thing that had never gotten over, that Stan hadn't been able to get over, that, that Stan and Jack, that Roy Thomas, that um, Neil Adams, none of them, uh, Starenko, hadn't been able to get over. He, he wanted the opportunity to prove that he could get something over that no one else had. I would just pick it because if you do a half ass effort, it's still like the second or third best run up there. Right? Running. <laughs> I'm like, you that's, that's the only you reason I do it. Mail. It's a softball pitch in. I'm like, I'm in. The bar like, is so it's low. So low. <laughs> Look, it's basically okay. Kamala Khan bitching about the politics of California and how much gas costs, but it ain't bad. <laughs> now that might that might be uh, that, that be would be good. Good, uh, but no, you know, a character like take a character like Captain Marvel. Um, Carol Danvers used to be written well by Chris Claremont. Uh, you know, when her personality would come to the fore in Rogue, it was always really interesting. She had a very playful, very fun personality. She bounced off of Wolverine really well. So if you take her back to that. And then you also have the addition of her being Captain Marvel and being part of the cosmic universe. You get access to the Kree, you get access to Ronin, you get access to Annihilus, you get all of this great cosmic stuff that you can do. That could be a hell of a compelling character in a Amen. compelling comic book with really important adventures that are interesting. Uh, but unfortunately, they never put anybody on the book that can tap into that because it's always my feminism. Mm -hmm. If I wrote Kamala Khan, I'd just shit on New Jersey the whole time. That's what <laughs> I, really, I hate This New place Jersey. is a hellhole. <laughs> yeah, like that's what <laughs> he's One more, you syringe, <laughs> go into the library. Exactly. Trying to do my homework. Have Cap come in and like, what, what's there? What's good to happen here? Like, the best thing is to get the hell out of here. Let's go. And they, they just well, no, I think the I think the best description of Jersey was written by a celebrated New Jersey native. Uh, Bruce Springsteen uh, wow. in his song where he said, we've got to get out while we're young. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> no, no. The best was uh, the, the situation, the wonderful song yeah. called the 10 coolest things about New Jersey by the bloodhound gang, which was just yes. 10 minutes, 10 seconds of silence. Silence. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Perfect. 
Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's hear from the people now that we're them. dumping on Jersey. Lane says, Doc Phoenix, G's despair all who oppose him. Yeah. Yes. I, I will be the Phoenix. That the, it, it'll Could you be wear a... the outfit and make it sexy, though? Oh, That's yeah. I, I could. You'd have my gut hanging out yeah, over the... the... Gut. You're you might have the moves for it, but I don't know if you've got the, the ass. Fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I can just kind of conjure my own cigarettes yeah that's it <laughs> you got one in his ear like, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, just just rip it a fucking heater <laughs> like, uh, like i'm surprised doc isn't old school where he like uh you know he rolls his own tobacco no you know what i've tr- I tried doing that a number of years ago when uh to like cigarette taxes got so absurd yeah. Um, cause Pennsylvania is fairly high up there. They're not as bad as like New York or California or Illinois with that kind of thing, but they're still really fucking expensive. We're over $11 a pack here. Um, oh. and so I started because at the time, Pennsylvania wasn't taxing right. unrolled tobacco. So I was able to do it a lot cheaper and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's. It's just I'm not start worth the vaping, effort. Doc. You seem like a vapor. No, fuck that. <laughs> you know what though? If, I, I would I will say that having had dinner with Doc, if he suddenly leaned back and took out a pipe and started packing exactly. a pipe, and, and like I'd be like, oh, this, yeah, like I wouldn't even give sense. it a second thought. This makes complete sense. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's gonna, oh, he's gonna he's gonna say he's gonna lay some wisdom on me right now. <laughs> Raid X Seven. The Doom Patrol is a ripoff of the Fantastic Four. It Stanley had a, written a prototype X Men story in Amazing Fantasy. A year before Doom Patrol first appeared. Oh my goodness! What uh, a apologist. No, the Challengers of the Stanley Unknown apologist. is the ripoff of the Fantastic Four. Exactly, Doom Patrol is nothing like the Fantastic Four. They're the X Men yeah. before the X Men existed. Yeah, like a month. Listen, dude. Everyone Arm- steals Armageddon ideas, a- Doc. Armageddon's a ripoff of Deep Impact. We all know yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Even though they came out in the same fucking summer. <laughs> Volcano and Dante's Peak. Yes. Jim, you have no. to make a choice. Which one's better, Deep Impact Armageddon? I, I'm going to say Deep Impact because remember when we talked about the Armageddon that one time? That guy was giving me shit and like the biggest <laughs> fan of Armageddon. So fuck that guy. I say it's, all, it's all about your feud, I, isn't it? John? Yeah, it is. This tells West you something about remember. His personality. I don't I, remember it. Oh, I ended up in the in the chat of that video. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, three days worth of yelling and oh, uh, this says so. Oh no, no, it's definitely deep impact because you get to see like actual destruction. Yeah. Like shit actually gets destroyed in that movie. Like Armageddon, okay. the 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 climax. Was too clean, other than Bruce Willis dying. Yeah. Well, he well, right, got to make a choice. Speech. Oh, it's Deep Impact because yeah. Deep Impact is a more intellectual movie. Yeah. Uh, than that. <laughs> I don't think it's. Oh, I so don't you guys think all it's fancy unfair yourselves. To smart mm-hmm. is what you're saying. Well, we're all wearing monocles and. Other than Jim, who takes everything personally, is what he's saying. But, but this guy was an <laughs> asshole. We ended up. Remember when it was like Jason Todd who ended up destroying that asteroid that was coming to hit. Oh Gotham. yes. And remember, and I said, "Oh, it's kind of like Armageddon." This guy starts going off with like technicalities. Of oh Armageddon. yeah, I remember that. And then I was so like Armageddon. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I was making a joke, ass, and then I went at it. Do you guys, do you guys remember? in the boys where tech knight had to fly out and uh and basically uh have intercourse with the <laughs> asteroid to break it up just like <laughs> armageddon i hope that guy's <laughs> listening like right now <laughs> armageddon armageddon sucks yeah they had to drill an asteroid too yeah they did drill an asteroid <laughs> i mean there's some funny stuff in there like i i did laugh out loud when uh Michael Clark Duncan's on the motorcycle being chased by the government, and he's like, "Come get Papa Bear!" Like, <laughs> was like that, that was laughed in spite. I was like, "That's funny." <laughs> Goblin says this has been happening for years. Comics changing to be in sync with the adaptations it ruin it ruins individuality. It makes me more and more hesitant to pitch my project. Well, do you remember? Don't pitch, don't pitch your project to a to a major company. Do your project independently. Do you remember when Avengers, like the movie, came out? They actually left the comics alone and they actually launched a separate line or a separate title it was called avengers world and it was supposed to be the comic book continuation 
of like what would happen between the first Avengers and the second Avengers movie. And it was going to be that universe. And then they integrated it into continuity in the comics. And then it became part of the 616. And now all of a sudden. Sounds like Miles Morales all over again. Yes, except for they didn't even do like some universe changing event to do it. They just started writing it as part of the 616. And then it mm -hmm. stopped making any fucking sense. Um, and then Avengers World became another Hickman title. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my goodness. Well, we can't uh, have nice Wraith things. X7. Tail wagging the dog synergy with the movies and TV series is one of the worst things that has happened to Marvel. Not wrong. That's why we don't have a good Nick Fury anymore. In the Do you have a gag ball in your mouth, Doc? I, I don't know what. No, I, 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 I was leaned. I was leaning down, and then I spoke. Oh, that well, was sound in the future. Something weird. Yeah, Doc's doing his jaw, his jaw exercises to get that you know, Hollywood, uh, <laughs> Hollywood sculpt. Yes. Yeah, it does suck when when outside mediums start controlling something or a narrative that's been around for eighty years, and it definitely throws things off, and then. Next thing you know, you have a writer that shows up, and you can tell they've never actually read any of the comic books. They only know the heroes from yeah, the movies. Yeah, that's worse. The the Black Widow and Hawkeye book. Yeah, the White Widow book. Stephanie Phillips. Oh, the White Widow book. Remember, she remember, doesn't, even, doesn't even know the movie version. Remember that one gal was doing the uh, X Men deal, and it's like, I I love the third X Men movie back movie, in the day. Yes. Like, oh god, like this is trouble. Was like, that um, Nadia Shamus? I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My love of X Men ignited in X three. X three, <laughs> really? <laughs> like that? That's it, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. God, terrible. So I, I recently, I recently met a a cosplayer when I was at WonderCon, and um, we were talking about her uh, her love of X Men, and it was uh, it was actually respectable because uh, you know she's like I'm like okay, well, where did you start? Where'd you get in? She goes, well, you know, like I saw the card. She goes, um, I I, I picked up Jim Lee's X Men number one. You know, she goes, because I just thought the art was amazing. I picked it up. She goes, and I became fascinated with the character of Rogue. And then I was like, I want to know everything about this character. And so she started going back through the, the uncanny history and buying like all these key issues with Rogue and then starting and filling out those gaps and became like this huge X-Men fan. And that's that's the way. And it then she made herself into Rogue. Yeah. yeah. And she uh, now, mm -hmm. now she cosplays Rogue. <laughs> well, she, knew, she knew her stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's really I don't I've never been one of those people like I remember. uh who was it? It was uh, one of the guys that worked on Starman, um, one of the artists, and he got in trouble for saying that like cosplay was the death of comics. And uh, and I was like, I, I completely disagree because I've never cared how somebody comes in. Uh, I, I'm just glad that comics isn't a huge sausage party anymore. Um, but I don't care how you come into the fandom. What I care about is, are you you know are you an actual fan? Do you get into it? And you know if you came in because you were like, I like look look at this character and I want to dress up like this character, mm -hmm. and then you're like, I want to learn all about this character, and you start buying comics. You're buying comics, you know. That's yeah. that's the goal. I get know, it, Aaron. You're making fun of my wife that she has a, a <laughs> Chiefs jersey that has Taylor Swift on the back. I get Listen, it. Listen, I'm not <laughs> upset that she got into the Chiefs because of Taylor Swift. I'm just glad there's more Chiefs fit. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call her that. Uh, yeah, I, it's like <laughs> who it's was she like rooting for during the Super Bowl? Did she care about the game? No, she was. She was rooting for the Chiefs. She she was exactly. doing that. I, it's it's the idea of like you see a guy with what like was she Eagles doing during hat. the Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl? She was actually, it was weird when, well, that one, she was actually just somewhere else. Not I had, yeah, she wasn't even paying attention. Exactly, because she wasn't a Chiefs fan yet. Yeah. She had no, no one to root for. She She's a Swifty and a Chiefs fan now. So, so there Travis you go. Travis Kelsey fan. Knows nothing about anything and annoys me. That's what she really does. But but like you said about the cosplay, like you, you see a guy and I said, you see a guy with an Eagles hat and you're like, hey man, how about the draft? And he's like, what, what are you talking about? My girlfriend got me this. I'm like, get the hell out of here. I get so <laughs> angry. Posers. Yeah. Oh, I hate God it. damn. Johnny I got a neck ladies. pillow while I was, uh, while I was traveling. I was in uh, Dallas airport. And so it's a, it's a Dallas Cowboys neck pillow. Cause it was oh, the cheapest. Son of and so, bitch. and so like I get on planes and people are like, oh, Cowboys fan. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like sports ball. It's just a neck, like just a neck hello, man. <laughs> yeah, like just just tell him you like Tony Dorsett. I like uh, yeah, I like Cowboy Tony movies. Does that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you. Calvin we'll talk about, says. We'll talk about Tombstone. <laughs> two infamous examples: Danny Rand is no longer Iron Fist because of the backlash or a backflash on the Netflix show, and then Mags made Connor and Miss Martian's relationship. 
Well, the Connor Miss Martian relationship is popular because of Young Justice. Yeah. Um, so you know, I can see putting and those, that, those yeah. two characters together. The Danny Rand, there was no real backlash against Danny Rand on Iron Fist because normies don't care. It's just always the same 12 weirdos. It was the on Mary Twitter. Sue. Oh god, the Mary Sue. Or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, those those dumb <laughs> bints <laughs> to use a British term. <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite british term that demeans women jim your mom was british what's that what's your favorite british term that demeans women that's not american oh, your mom was british i can't say that uh mine's know. slag slag is good i was thinking more of what the you know because you say that in, in england and people think you just said the c word but if you say it in america yeah. they and they don't no take idea. offense to it at all that, no, like, you say slag in America, and people go, "Oh, you like the Dinobots from Transformers? I like. I also like the Dinobots. Let's and, talk and about the Dinobots." But you could also call Mary. someone a c-word to their face in in England. Yeah, yeah. And it can be taken as an offense, but it's also like a term of endearment. I kind of like the universal bitch. Is what I go with. That's what I usually call my mom. We're talking about what I call my mom, right? <laughs> no, I was just oh, you know oh. words that demean women in yeah. the British. No, show. slag is pretty lexicon. Good. Yeah, slag's pretty good, and it, it kind of goes good here and in. in you know, steel country. Then we end up yeah. being able to say that. You call your, you call your mom a bitch, Jim? If I call I mean, her I just, at I all. Mean, it's just a matter of preference because, <laughs> because, you know, I call mine a whore. So I, mean, <laughs> that is, I, I tend to You're dabble in that as well, <laughs> Aaron. But yeah, <laughs> to call my mom that, I'd actually have to call her. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> that hasn't happened in a while. You guys are awful. Well, Mr. Subtle. You, you took us down this path, man. Yeah. I, <laughs> Kamala was killed simply so she could be retconned as a mutie. And be in the X Men movie as a lead. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> Guess what? No one cares about her as a mutant either, or as an X Men. Nope. No one buys this stuff. You gotta no, make and, her and, compelling. And the you know me and the rest of the fans, uh, you start losing them as well. Uh, you know, not even joking. The idea where you start changing characters to try to jump on these bandwagons, you just lose what you had already as well. Instead of just trying to make the character yeah. good. I'm when you announce your next X Men movie, you know the MCU or your first X Men movie, the MCU, and you're you're like Kamala Khan. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> you're not trying yet. Call me yeah. when you're ready to try. Yeah. I think there's going to be some long term ramifications and fallout from all that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Man, Doc is taking a big number two, I'm, isn't he? I'm right here. <laughs> and even even <laughs> you've been gone for minutes. <laughs> yeah. This absolute deal, kind of, you know, you are getting that play that they are reacting with some of these things but they're just not doing enough of it to you know to prove to people that they, they mean it again you know at dc at least carrie from nurgle creates creates a doc self-insert comic would be, would sell better than a mariko tamaki self-insert um yes undoubtedly yes because i would be well funny <laughs> Would you eat Doc, a lot look, of food? I've, I've had dinner. I've had dinner with Doc. Doc is a fascinating character, and I think a, a book <laughs> about Doc would sell really well, actually. <laughs> so, do you think he's playing a part, or do you think it's authentic Doc? No, I think it's authentic Doc. I think he's I think that you can't it off. Fake. I think there's five versions of Doc. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's like he's like Moon Knight, where he's got like multiple different lives that he's leading, but uh, each each one is interesting. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I have multiple lives that I'm leading, but n they're not too deviant <clears throat> from one another. Deviant being the, the key word. <laughs> the optimal <laughs> word there. Yes. <laughs> that was my 20s and early 30s. Yeah. Common sense. I don't trust Stephanie Phillips writing cosmic story in Phoenix. She's going to bring back fake cosmic ghostwriter. Cammy should, should be cosmic ghostwriter. I, I don't trust Stephanie Phillips writing. You can stop at that. I don't that trust there. her writing the goddamn menu. I don't. She I don't. could undersell the Kung Pao chicken. Yes. <laughs> I mean, look, let's be honest. Has Stephanie Phillips written anything other than that Cap Wolf <laughs> Cap that Wolf. wasn't? I mean, that the was. The first issue of Future State Harley Queen Future was State. shockingly good. Yep. But the second issue like ruined the concept. In yeah, the yeah, it was it's really weird. good. I sent her a note that I really, really liked it. And she got some talent, nice to me kid. Until, until you know, Gabe stepped she, in. Gabe ruined, ruined it for, for everybody. Him. Yeah, ruined it for all of us. <laughs> did, 
Dude, what did he say? This was this comic book was the equivalent of the middle finger to Harley Quinn fans. It was that, or like he actually said, like, "Oh, I see what happens when people don't try and just want to cash a check, something like that." And they, I don't know why, but they took offense to that. But I don't <laughs> think that Stephanie Phillips actually wants to cash the check. She just wants to be given the check. Yes, exactly. Well, didn't she say in an interview recently? I saw something about this, and correct me if I'm wrong, chat. But uh, didn't she say recently that the whole reason that she got into comics was because she had an ex that really loved comics? And now she just likes the idea of him going into his comic book store mm, to pursue nice. his beloved ho hobby and see her name on all these books. So like that, spite is she, like she doesn't realize factor. that like everybody else he avoids that book. He yes. like walks by yeah. like yeah all right. Well no I just I said like I said like that just feels like and when yeah. every yeah. when, when my when my work movie. has shut down every single comic book store and well, I no longer enjoy that hobby because it no longer exists my work in this yeah. industry will be done. Well tell so it, I only saw the second part. I assume that she was saying I love Brian Azarello so much I want him to see my comic books everywhere. Like, oh is that what it was? was more, that I have no movie. idea. The first uh -huh. part that no, Aaron said is definitely so something I would do. I'd be <laughs> I look, I can be a great motivator. The only, the only reason I'm still alive is spite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What Phoenix are the chances Ghost. that we see Cosmic Ghost Rider in this Phoenix book? 99%. It's got to be at least. What are the chances anyone cares? He'll show up to bore the hell out of us. Because uh, that's what she did with the character. Terrible. Yeah. Not not good. Not good for the future <laughs> comic books. No, no. I do Is want to a... say thank you very much to everybody. We we don't have a full panel here. Art T Bear. Uh, I maybe he didn't realize how early we started, which is Oh well uh... listen, I told him I had a conference with him earlier in the week and I corrected him because he thought the show was on Sunday. I said, no, it's on Saturday, Saturday, 7 a.m. So I did tell him. <laughs> I don't okay. know if I don't know. Well, he wasn't able to make it. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Barron had to check out early and, and also Aaron's about to check out, and I don't want to do a three-way with Doc and Jim. No. If I'm being completely honest here. You prefer would to you, be made the, airtight? Can you, would you be the lucky no. Pierre in that What in that you situation? could do is share a video without sound. Everybody would love that. <laughs> Why do people want to call me a boomer on that one? I assume it's a problem with StreamYard, not me. Yeah, I, I I would think that that might be the case. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. And I could have been Doc could have done you know, some off the cuff narration you know, mm. in the world. Yeah, that yeah been he good. Have, he's supposed to be the co host. You probably should have stepped up on that one. Where were you on that one, dipshit? <laughs> um, anywhere <laughs> did you else? Just, did you just have me? Did you just have me Gilmore him? That's Absolutely, <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines in movie history. When he's like eyeballing him, like he's about to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> he made him look stupid. So let's do some comic book recommendations. And Daddy's getting his chicken nuggies uh, 20 minutes early today. Aaron Sparrow, you're the one that's forcing the abrupt uh, stoppage of everything here. Are you recommending comic books? I sent you a couple files for reader copies. Yeah. You sent me Cobra Commander 4, which uh, I'll be picking up that and uh, Duke 5 today. I uh, did get to read digital copies of both, and uh, they are both fantastic. Um, so Duke comes out next week, so we'll be looking out for that one. Yeah, yeah so definitely be looking out for that one because that's also very good. Uh, I'm going to go catch up on Transformers today, but uh, Cobra Commander number 4, mwah. Uh, I was watching um, Max's show last night and uh, he was saying like, he's having a little more trouble getting into Cobra commander than he is like Duke and some of the other books. Um, and he goes, maybe it's just cause I'm not familiar with Cobra commander. And I'm like, yeah, no, I will. I will familiarize you with Cobra commander. Cause this book is good. Uh, it's got, uh, it's got nemesis and you're going to slip it. in the commander. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, Max. Get ready, baby. Um, <laughs> to have you yelling in Cobra law. Uh, <laughs> No, the book is really good. It's got Nemesis Enforcer from the movie in it. Uh, he talks, which is which was which threw me because uh, in the movie he doesn't talk; he just growls and snarls. Um, but uh, it uh, it's really well done. And Cobra Commander, like you're actually rooting for him to get through all this. Like you kind of mm -hmm. want to see him achieve his goal, uh, which is uh, which is really interesting because you know he is the villain. Uh, so I think Joshua Williamson's doing a really uh, bang up job. I'm super excited and enthusiastic for uh, you know everything that they're doing right now at Skybound with the uh, GI Joe and Transformers license. At least until we get Kelly Thompson Scarlet, which might derail everything for me. But uh, right now it's all the red. Very nice. You got any appearances coming up? I know you like to to travel uh, through the comic book YouTube sphere. Oh, you turned into a robot. He, yeah. he just Did said I? he is a robot. I think he said, I'm going to be on world class bullshitters, is what I think he was saying. That is what I said. Can you guys hear me yet? Yes. Yes. Am I okay? Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so I'll be on there Wednesday talking about uh, AI art and in comics <laughs> and uh, and AI writing in comics. Um, you know, uh, so that'll that ought to be a fun discussion. Well, very nice. I can't believe. Can you guys believe I pulled world class bullshitters out of what he said? I, I can't believe. I I, I couldn't understand <laughs> the a goddamn ear. word. So no, <laughs> it was gobbledygook, and I, I was mm-hmm. I was able to get it. Uh, Dill Lindsay says, "Fun show. Also, Armageddon is better than Deep Impact." You're wrong, sir. It's got the better soundtrack. You got fucking Aerosmith at their no, finest. Smith rocking it. It's got a yeah. dumb speech at the end. Uh, yeah. A really dumb speech. <laughs> I also I don't think it. that. Um, what was that? What they, they said Steve Buscemi had when he was riding the nuke. Yeah. He's got yeah. space dementia. I don't think that's real. <laughs> he might have made that up. Space madness. I, I actually have a PhD in space doctoring. It is real. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite real. So if it then it's more authentic. So there you yes. go. If I want something entertaining, I watch Armageddon. If I want probably a better story with a really annoying uh, kid protagonist played by Frodo Baggins, I'll watch Deep <laughs> Impact. I always thought I, I thought Taylor was super hot, Get out super of here. hot back in the day. So. Who? Yeah, Lila? I, oh, Taya Leone. Like I thought she oh, was oh absolutely. Taya Leone was smoking hot when she mm-hmm. was in Bad Boys and all that stuff. Oh, Bad Boys, yeah. yeah. So other Meg but, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Meg Ryan was gorgeous. So, All right, Jim. You and I, we had our Hot or Not podcast exclusive mm-hmm. to Thank and Critical Patreon. If you're not a member, definitely mm-hmm. check that out in the, in the thing below. So I know what comics you like, and we liked a lot of books from DC this week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to be on World Class Bullshitters this week, by the way. But I, uh, I'm they recommending Batman. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, Batman Off World. I, I did like that. Superman 13. Uh, but then I'm going to go Cobra Commander and Avengers Twilight. So the two DC. I haven't actually recommended two DC books, and I could have even went a couple more, but I'll, I'll keep it at four books. And you didn't almost die this week. Did you? Did nope. you sequester yourself? Did you put yourself in bubble wrap? What happened? I just, I guess it was a, a nice week. Everything else happened to everybody else. And I, I didn't realize my son this morning actually said that. He's like, oh, my God, I, I'm almost dying here. He sent me a message. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't realize that he works at the dispensary. And, and he said that people are, uh, you know, like going it's in 420. There. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I did, I'm such a. They're a coming in for the deals. So I'm such a pure soul that I didn't know what he was talking Where's about. Where's the I'm half like, off the kind bud, sir? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. He was. He's, he's like, it's our busy season. Dad. I keep I'm getting really stuff. Yeah, really. He's like, this is Black Friday. Uh, but I ended up. Yeah, he was <laughs> messaging me all this time. But I fine. Lands on do you know what they call that, Jim? What do they call that? The calm before the storm. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna yeah. have two weeks of absolute well, shit. I'll tell you, I am. I am going to mow the lawn tomorrow. So fingers crossed. <laughs> I guess that's gonna you're be. Gonna wear some steel toe boots. That's when I always end up almost killing myself when I'm. Mowing wear the lawn. a fucking suit of armor, dude. Yes, that's that that blade is gonna come flying yeah, off. Exactly. Oh my god! And I, I haven't lose uh, a started foot. It up. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> you know what's crazy, Doc? Jim huh. has five sons. In between the ages of yeah. 17 and, and 30, two of them the still grass. live in his house, yep. and his old ass is still mowing the yep, lawn. My old ass. Right. Put your foot down, sir. I did I, I assert your dominance off. over your children. You know what? From the time I was like 12, no, like 10, yep. until I, was I, went, until I moved. Nine, yes. Yeah, until I moved out of my fucking parents' house. And even then, I was yep. still yep. coming back for a couple when of I years. When I came home from college, I actually went and mowed my parents' lawn, and I don't even like them. And so each week, I but I felt bad for them, you know. Yeah, because they're so old and they're decrepit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're like you. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go help my dad put up his fucking awnings tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But my kids don't do that. They don't do shit. <laughs> Punch them in the face. Yeah, Come on, Jim. Sure. Like they should be working the plow. That they should be. <laughs> it should be. Uh, you, uh, like you get the seventeen-year-old out there. You or get work him the to... pole. Now. Mow the lawn. You can give him a fresh <laughs> brewski and make it kind of a cool experience. So I want to do it again. Dad gives me a beer and drinks it with me when I do yeah. the lawn. Yeah. Well, I I don't drink, so we're we're in trouble. Get him a little duels. He won't know anything. I'll do that. Now my my one son that just turned twenty one last month, and he ended up like getting really drunk the first, and now Blackout he doesn't want to drink. Yeah, he got really bad, so he hasn't drank since. Did he have a three wise men? No, I forget what he ended up. Uh, he, he just Cuervo, Jack, being... and Jim all in the same shot glass. Yeah, that's crazy. That almost put me in the hospital. Once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how you got dengue fever. No, I got dengue <laughs> I'm, fever. I'm wrapping it all mosquito. around here. Uh, yes. 
Dengue Fever. I thought that that was a movie by Spike Lee at one point, wasn't it? I'm not <laughs> Jungle sure. Fever. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Isn't it the same? And he had <laughs> Devil in a Red Dress, I believe, as well, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Denzel Washington. Do the Right Thing. Do Hold the Right Thing movie. is a great movie. It's one of my favorites. I love it. Do you remember the old yeah. uh, the old bit on um, where Spike Lee's running a convenience store on In Living Color, <laughs> and uh, with every purchase yeah. you get a free copy of School Days. <laughs> and the girl's like, and he's like, you know, hey, you get a free copy of School, or you get a copy of School Days, and the, the girl's like, I don't want it, and he goes, yeah, oh, it's like, free. She goes, it. Oh, it's free? No, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> school Days. Uh, All right, last but not least, Doc, you've already shown us a couple of your floppies. Time to show us some more floppies, or are you you showing us new stuff? Oh, I'm showing new. Well, no, I am not showing new stuff. In fact, Ooh. I am showing X Men. I think this is 225, but if you see right up there, date stamp because it's a newsstand, right, right on the yeah. on the where the fuck's my finger? Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, on the X. On the X. The Doesn't old... that ruin the value of the comic book? No, actually, CGC considers date stamps to be acceptable because they're added by the retailer, mm. um, and they were very, very common practice. So, yeah, date stamp co- copy. Uh, I found this yesterday. I needed a newsstand copy. Apparently, I only had the direct, so I found this and uh, added that. So next. This is slightly new, but it's still like eight years old. Uncanny Avengers, but this J. Scott Campbell. No, this wasn't the Jerry Duggan one. This was the Jim Zub, I think. Hmm. Um, it was the one that had Deadpool as the uh, Deadpool and Cable on the team with Spider Man, but it was another, you know, it was that unity team but this was like the third volume uh after remender left after they kind of like forced him off the book so uh this j scott campbell variant mostly because i needed another j scott campbell variant and then finally i finished it one through 600 done this was the last fucking book i needed some obscure reprint era issue it couldn't be anything big no, no, it just has to be some random reprint issue. This is number it's kind of juggernaut showing you his ass. Yes, <laughs> juggernaut literally <laughs> show there. Ooh, just juggernaut says, ass. Take a bite of that apple, America. <laughs> and, and, oh, I got him. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, this is this is the last book I needed, and I came across it uh during Whatnot Con. So which was, I think, going on last weekend or this past week, something like that. It was an online comic convention where basically every vendor was selling, and they were holding their good shit for that. Uh, But so, yep, X-Men 80, this completed my 1 through 600 run. So there are my recommendations. Do you feel accomplished? I do, but then how I'm long like, did it take you when you decided you were going to do it to doing it? Uh, 35 years. That's it. I mean, yeah, like when I started reading X Men in like 1987, you like decided a year that later, get every X Men comic up to issue 600. At, 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 well, I didn't know that it would be going to 600 because it was in around 223 that, that I you started on x-men um, well time to get on spider-man no, i'm working no to sit on your laurels i am i'm already working on spider-man and i i think the lowest issue i have right now is issue 43 so there you go congratulations that is an achievement unlocked if we are in a video game you get another piece of armor or something or some type of badge perhaps even a little dog to play with you but i do want to say thank you very much to everybody congratulations to doc uh, thank you to Mike Barron, and uh, hope everyone has a good weekend. I'm going to bounce out of here and get some foods before I talk to Drew about the best comic books of the week. Get out. Leave. <laughs>